Support for The Hub is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technological developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide, and I got an exclusive offer for you guys. 20% off plus free shipping with the code HUB, H-U-B. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code HUB, H-U-B, at Manscaped.com. What's up, Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's Kush back at it again with another Giants video. Um, so today we're gonna talk about a little bit about the backup QB position for the New York Giants. I um I saw that Alex Smith was probably gonna part ways with the Washington football team earlier today. Um, and there was rumors going around about that saying that he actually was not happy with the team and the team was not happy with him despite the whole comeback story being built around him during the season uh, that they didn't have the best of relationships and then I think it was uh, it was it was out of Rapport or Schefter that tweeted out that um that they're expected to part ways soon and that got me thinking about our backup QB position not because I think Alex Smith is going to be a potential candidate for it but just because of Colt McCoy who was also on the football team with Smith at one point and to be fair to Colt McCoy, in my opinion, I would be completely fine the Giants do stick with him at the backup QB position, but there are people who believe that we need somebody a bit better. Um, I'm not I'm not sure particularly why. They, maybe they just want a little bit more confident if um, Daniel Jones does go out with another injury in his third year. You know, in his first two, he has missed a couple of weeks, you know, minor injuries, but nevertheless, he has missed game time, which has given the backup QB a significant role in those games. You know, of course, with this year with uh, Colt McCoy and Seattle, where we won um and then the next two we did not win whatever the case is though people just want to be a bit more confident with the backup qb position and some of them believe that mccoy isn't even the best teacher i think he's been a pretty good backup quarterback for the giants you know what i mean um i'm not even talking about on the field type stuff i've loved what he's done for us off the field you can't forget how he helped us out in the offseason where he was the one that helped us secure a training field down in texas using his connections you know as a texas longhorn for the offensive guys down there to train, to, to get to know each other a little bit and to, to practice football. Colt McCoy was that guy who did that for us. And he all around seems to be a good locker room guy. And I'm assuming he was a good teacher to DJ, but there's really only one guy that I'm looking at. And if you guys tuned into the Young Guns podcast episode this past Wednesday, when we talked about the backup QB position, it was one name that stood out to me and my fellow co-host Kid Blue, and it was Terod Taylor of the Los Angeles Chargers. And Taylor, he is the guy on the market right now. And there, there are, you know, other, uh, other few who could fit the Giants well. But then what you have to consider when you're thinking about backup QB right now, and I think Terod fits that, is A, are they going to be good enough to come in and handle the team should Daniel Jones go down? He fits that. B, is he a legitimate threat to Daniel Jones um, as a starting quarterback? And that's where it gets a bit murky. I don't think he is because what it would depend on is what Terod views himself as right now. If he's coming to the Giants, then that probably means he knows that he's going to be the backup QB. Now, he, of course, he was the starter for Buffalo, and that's where he broke out. He was originally part of Baltimore, but when he was with Buffalo as their starter, he did take them to the playoffs in 2017. Hence, a lot of people were kind of surprised when they let him go after that season, and then they drafted um, Josh Allen, and well, you know, history has been history. He then went over to Cleveland for one season, and then, of course, has been with the Chargers in the past two seasons where he's been you know average to say the best that's why I don't really think he's a threat to Daniel Jones's starting job versus a guy like say maybe Jacoby Brissett who in terms of the career so far they have kind of similar careers where you could say they've been average at best but Brissett has been a backup for the entirety of his the difference is Brissett is younger and thus has more time and maybe even a little bit more potential than Terod does but yeah getting back to the two points can he come in and handle the team 100%? Is he a threat to Daniel Jones's, uh, you know, starting and Daniel Jones's actual career? I don't think Terod Taylor is. And the third one would be, at least in our case, 
Can he be somewhat of a mentor to Daniel Jones? Can he still help Daniel Jones learn something? Can he depart some knowledge onto him? Whether it's in the film room, whether it's just in the locker room, whether, I don't know, it's just them talking on the sidelines of a game or during practice or something. But can he be somebody that Jones could work with and learn from? And definitely, Tarod can be that. The one thing that stands out to you about the guy is that he barely turns the football over. You look at it throughout his career, the guy has, what, 20 interceptions on his career in his, well, it's been like a nine or 10 year career. If we're gonna be fair, he's played 72 games, I believe. That's not bad at all. His career um, interception percentage is 1.4 for his entire career. The most interceptions he ever threw in a season was during 2015 and 2016, where he threw six um, to 20 touchdowns and 17 touchdowns respectively. Tyrod just does not turn over the ball. He's a great, great safe type of quarterback or you know he's just one that makes smart decisions and even though in my opinion and in some Giants fans opinions to be fair we don't necessarily blame all of the turnovers all of the interceptions on Daniel Jones you know we don't we recognize that some of these interceptions were just popped into the air or some of them literally you know went through the hands of some receivers the fact of the matter is Daniel Jones did have a lot of interception worthy plays this year and he did have games where he just looked really bad and it looked almost as if he was better at throwing to the other team rather than throwing to the new york giants receivers there there have been times where that has shown and so if there's one thing to rod can definitely teach dj in my opinion is it going to be listen man it's going to be how to slow down the game a little bit how to recognize how to read these defenses better or just how to read his own receivers and deliver the right ball to the right player decision making because with stats like that and with how Tarod's play style has been throughout his entire career, he's somebody that just does not turn the football over. And that's something you're going to have to hope that he imparts on Daniel Jones if he comes over here to be a Giants QB. Now, let's just go over his career stats. I'm going to start from Buffalo because over in Baltimore, he didn't really see the field that much. So from 2015, basically, first year as a starting quarterback for Buffalo, went 7-6 and six as the QB there. He logged in 380 throws for 3,035 yards, 63.7 completion percentage, 20 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. Uh, he was also selected to the Pro Bowl that year in 2015. In 2016, the QB record that he had was 7-8. and eight. He had 436 throwing attempts, 3,023 yards, 61.7 completion percentage, 17 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. 2017, the year he took them to the playoffs, he went 8-6 and six as the quarterback, 420 attempts, 2,799 yards, 62.6 .6 completion percentage, 14 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. Then he went over to Cleveland where there was that whole debacle where it's like, um, I don't know if you guys remember the Hard Knocks episode where they were announcing who won the backup QB position. It was kind of crazy me but um everybody knew that baker mayfield was going to start at some point um and it, it's kind of sad well i don't know if it's sad or if you could look at it as a bit of dark humor or whatever the case is but to rod for basically the past five years of his career has always been in the position that he would be if he comes to the giants right now which is he's gonna be here for somebody else to start you know happened with josh allen happened with um with baker mayfield happened with uh justin herbert but that's why i'm kind of banking on maybe he realizes his position as a mentor backup type of quarterback for younger guys you know that he could help them learn a little bit that's what i'm that's what i'm banking on it doesn't necessarily mean that's what he, it's gonna happen you know what i'm saying anyway in cleveland he uh, played, I think, three games for the Browns where he went 1-1-1. One, one, and one. He had 85 throws for 473 yards, 49.4 um, completion percentage, two touchdowns, two interceptions. LA's first year in 2019, he went, he didn't even really see the field that much. He literally has a six throws for 33 yards so that doesn't really count but then he did win a game in 2020 and he actually looked he didn't look bad he looked good before he went down with the with the uh the heart issue i think that was like that was very early on in the season i can't remember but he did win a game he had uh 30 throws 16 completions 208 yards 53.3 percent completion percentage uh no touchdowns no interceptions but he he did you know he did win them a game you know you, you give him credit for that but yeah, at the end of the day, I think that if the Giants were to move on from Colt McCoy, if they really want to get an upgrade at the backup QB position, which is not really something you often hear about. Um, but for us, you once again, the only thing I could see is that maybe they want a better teacher or maybe they just want somebody a bit safer if DJ goes down with another injury later on in the season. If they were to do that, the guy I would want the most is Tarot Taylor.
you know i i really think that he fits the bill and the, the most important thing to me is that he's not a, he's not a legitimate competition to daniel jones i think at this point in his career he definitely isn't he's definitely not in his buffalo days where he was a starting quarterback and even at buffalo it's not like he was lighting up the league or anything and in the past couple of years just i think is a reflection of the point he's in his career he's just he is that now he is a quarterback almost a journeyman you know that could come in and that could support a starting guy and could help them learn a bit more particularly a young starting guy i could be completely wrong um Terod could really think he has a little bit more juice left in him the league could think he has some more juice left in him and maybe he gets a starting job <laughs> hey maybe with the washington football team who's going to be parting ways with alex smith but let me know what you guys think put your thoughts down below the mock draft 2.0 is already out for members will be premiering tuesday night that's it for now i'm out Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.